The other thing is, okay, so let me just throw this out here. Because the next thing I got coming, which I was going to get my students started on tomorrow. Oh, sorry, Friday. Is, is The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Now that sounds all nice and good, right? Yeah. Except for the way I teach it. Again, going back to the pedagogy. So I teach it through a critical race theory lens or a critical feminist lens. Both. I mean, I do both, actually. I mean, the students have a chance to analyze it with their essays through either or. And, and another essay, which is more like uh, mainstream, let's say. Um, a traditional, I guess, is better. Um, w- w- no. What's, what's because the common, what's, I mean, what, what's, when you say analyze it through critical race theory. Well, for instance, it's kind of like Maria those. teaching, like, because you, you brought up, David, the idea, like, watch out for oppression and racism at the center of something seems, being they, problematic. They seem to be buzzwords. Right. Mm-hmm. So those words, those words hover, and they're real powerful. So that's the way I go at the Tempest. I mean, the Tempest is this the story of a European man from Italy, a Duke of Milan, taking power over an island in the New World and enslaving two of the natives. And all the tensions that come with that. It's a pretty brilliant play by William Shakespeare, forecasting issues that we're having right now in this room. uh, what do I do? And because I've built a whole unit looking at that issue as metaphoric to what we go through here now. And there ain't no doubt that Shakespeare was going there because at the end of the Tempest, the Europeans get back on the boat and go home. So he has something to say. Now, do I avoid all that? Do I... Do I just scrap the Tempest and go to something super duper safe because the only way I want and know and I'm prepared to teach it is through this critical view that because I think it's the most engaging to my students because it's about their social relevant lives now. And when they you know, that they can take this, 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 this very archaic verse and live it in their own world that's out now because it's a little unsafe or, or do I water it down in a way where I get a spark notes and be a spark notesy teacher or do I just it, like I would advise Maria do I advise myself in the mirror and say just go get away just get away try something else go get a textbook get away that's what I'm, and that's like I mean we're going to start reading Ronald Takaki his his take on the Tempest, which is in his book, A Different Mirror, which is a multicultural revisionist history text. It's super duper famous and beautiful. It's probably on the list because I submitted it. It might be on the uh, list. And that's Friday, and I'm gone Friday, so that's sub lesson plans in my mind right now. So I'm a little nervy. And I'm nervy about starting the Tempest if I got to pull that back. Is there a way to teach the, I mean, it's kind of a stupid question, but is there a way to teach those perspectives of power without talking about race? But here's here's the rub. I might not bring it up, but they're brilliant. <laughs> and then I'm back. We're back where Suzanne had us, which it's is because addressing addressing the do I just simple mm-hmm. power relationships and addressing the the feminist issue. Regarding gender, yeah, there's, a, yeah, there's. No, you're, you're, yeah, you're, you're safer with. But it, but I mean, it's, a, it's, you're, you're it's safer with gender and <laughs> sex than. But it's a little uh, tricky. That's because we're still disempowered. Um, <laughs> but I think that it, it's a little tricky, just because, like, even when Chris was saying, do I, do I do something safe? And I was going to be flip and just throw out titles, but, like, for junior year, I mean, like, I was going to say Gatsby, but that's laden with class and race and concepts of American dream and identity. And then I was going to say, oh, you could do Huck Finn. And some no, homo- 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 <laughs> homoerotic tones, too. Yes. And it, I mean, that, that seems that, to be okay. that's what I mean. Um, but I mean, that's just part of, I mean, I think that they, there might be some way to, but I think the issue of, of race and class and gender, that permeates a lot of our classrooms when we're trying to deconstruct lit. I mean, that's 
why we're looking at literature as a reflection of society, as a reflection of who we are, and so. Reading through reading through that opinion, the nexus of race, class, and oppression mm -hmm. is the problem. Mm -hmm. For for, mm -hmm. for unless from it's this, in my classroom. Yeah, okay. no, I got it. But uh, yeah, yeah, but but I mean that's that's the yeah. best that I can glean from the opinion and from, from the, the advice this morning, is that when, when those features converge from the teacher. I can't, I can't start this unit. You can't. Then, then there's where the problem rests. Um, would you? I would agree. I would concur with your statement based on the information that we heard this morning. I don't know that you have to eliminate the tempt tempest I think that once I you, do, if it's I, the only I, way I know how to teach it. In which case, then I then I think you throw it out. Once you begin to describe the 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 natives, and once you begin to delve into issues that are going to be from a critical race theory perspective, that that's when you're not in that safe harbor, so to speak. Mm -hmm.